Um, and Ed Donovan? Present. Monica Garcia? Here. Juanita Thorpe? Present. Dennis Bostic? Present. Michael Rose? Here. Ashley Comins? Here. Deborah? Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> Taj? Not. Amanda? Here. Okay. Um, announcements. This is the last meeting for uh, last legislative, last voting meeting for many of us. For Michael, uh, Denny, myself, um, and Taj. And I just have to say, being as a uh, Serving as the president, at least for the last last year, serving on the board with all of you, it's been it's been a, a pleasure and honor. Uh, I'm humbled to have served with you, and I want to just thank you all for your service because, as a volunteer in this community, um, you're giving up every Tuesday night, Saturdays. Uh, Monday nights, whatever it is, to participate in committees, and um, we've accomplished a lot. I am very happy with what we've accomplished, at least this, this past year. Uh, we reinvigorated our committees, um, and committee chairs, thank you for um, all of the work that you've done in your committees. We we negotiated a five-year contract with our Teachers, I just want to say to all of our administrators here, um, our teachers who may be watching us, thank you. Thank you for all you do. We don't say it enough to you, uh, but we so appreciate um, everything that you do. For all of our staff um, and employees, the administrative staff, the facilities, the maintenance staff, um, just thank you for everything that you do. Um, we. Our policies, we've really, you know, taken off on getting our policies um, updated. Um, we have, um, we've done a lot. Um, one of the things I, when I was meeting with Dr. Joe to wrap up uh, this year and talk about the next year, what worked, what didn't work, what we finished, what we didn't finish, there's a lot I wanted to finish, but I, one thing I think I'm proud of is that for a while we were talking all the time about adults and money <laughs> and instead of the kids and I feel very comfortable with where we are we're starting to talk about the kids and what's going on in the classrooms and trying to make sure that we give our students um, everything and and parent engagement is so important and we're just so happy to see the parents that come and bring their um, their loved ones with them so um, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Our favorite, our favorite part of any board meeting is the student of the month. We'll do that now. So let's do the student. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Public comments. Yeah, let's, let's do public comments real quick. I do have one person right now. Oh, okay. I didn't realize you had to Yeah, there is. My name is Ed Donovan. I have a public comment. Oh. I live at 2360 Seabring Place in the first ward. And my comment is to make sure that somebody's service, even though she just stole a lot of my thunder, doesn't go unrecognized. Tonight, in 500 school districts all around the state, there are about 2,000 members who are ending their terms of service just the way Deb is. But I would wager to you that not one of them could hold, my money would say, that not one of them could hold a candle to Deb for the level of service that she's brought to this district in terms of integrity, hard work, honesty, and a devotion to accuracy in everything she does. She served two four-year terms as the finance chair, inherited a district that was three and a half million dollars in debt, and brought us to where we are now. She was allowed to retire after those eight years, but when we needed her and asked her to come back, she didn't hesitate. Except she asked if I would behave, but she didn't hesitate. <laughs> I understand. I just That's found true. out tonight. She said, "Well, let be nice to me." Uh, <laughs> but she didn't hesitate to come back as the finance chair, walking into that, and then we made her president, and she just rose to that occasion as well. I feel I wish that all twelve thousand or so people who live in Wilkinsburg could see what we have seen over the last two year, year and a half of Deb's final service to the school district. You know, you come here 
with no authority and no power except your voice and your vote. That's all you have. And Deb, you have used both your voice and your vote to such an extent that we are as successful as we are right now. So on behalf of everybody in Wilkinsburg, my public comment is to thank you for your service to this school district. Well, thank you.
as my November student of the month. A couple words come to mind when I, the reason why I chose Jamea. One is effort. Jamea always works hard and is persistent every day. Two would be character. She displays initiative, honesty, respect, responsibility, compassion, and optimism. And behavior, Jamea has no referral. She shows leadership and she's very respectful. And her attendance, she attends school on a daily basis. She definitely is a role model to others. She's such a sweet young lady who greets us each morning and afternoon with a smile and kind words. Being polite is just part of who she is and how she treats others. She doesn't draw attention to herself, but she does what needs to be done. She actively participates in class. She does a nice job in her work without needing praise or attention. We can always count on her to do the right thing, whether we are watching or not. When you have a student in class that you can learn from as much as she learns from you. That's a true honor. It's been a pleasure having Jamea so far in school, and I'm more than proud to have her as the signing family November student of month. Jim. Okay, let's think about it. One that's like requires some studying, homework type. Like homework like math. Okay, that's mm -hmm. really. Oh, then that's the new math. Oh, good. Yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. And who who makes sure you got up and go to school every day? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> Congratulations, Jamea. It's really cool that you have yes. your favorite subject. You keep that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, I think we've had a perfect example of two wonderful students and students in the month. Really? So, um, and, and this makes it all worthwhile, right, for serving on, on this report. So, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Yeah. You want to get a picture? Oh, yeah. Here, y'all do that. Our sister. Oh, okay. Superintendent. Superintendent. Yeah. 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 Ye
Hi, just some up, just some current updates. Um, I did attend the Edspace conference and campus safety conference in Charlotte. Um, they talked about uh, just some maybe a heads up, and I know I discussed it last week quickly. Um, the two big things was natural light in the schools with a lot of windows, but then there was a lot of conflicting, you know, concerns uh, from school resource officers, some superintendents, um, with all the natural light and how it could impact school safety. Uh, room design for collaboration, creativity, and exploration. And again, as I talked about last week, those were the two big things that they, you know, that we got to see, but with new architecture. And the concern there was, of course, how to be able to work with that and still, you know, with the state testing. A lot of schools had the concerns with state testing and having all that. Um, again, for, you know, as we discussed, you know, previously, you know, we want to build a build. The safety is going to be an issue no matter what. But if we have things in place, if we have layered security, you know, we will be okay. But we can't just uh, think about how we design our boats as we sit there, as we go through Kelly renovation ideas and thoughts. Uh, flexible furniture, and that's something that, you know, we already had in place at uh, Turner during the last renovation. And it just got to see some different companies out there doing some different things. Um, and arch different architectures, and it was crazy. I did mention last week. You know, I got to see a building that was about five five hundred and fifty students. Um, it cost about twenty thousand dollars. Asked him what it would cost today, and he said it'd be about thirty, close to thirty-five. And that was done in 2020, 2021, somewhere in there. So, or did I say thousand? Yeah, a million. <laughs> I wish thirty yeah. million, twenty million dollars, and it would cost thirty-five million today. So. That's how much it's gone up. Bridge up program, uh, I've discussed this before also, but it's the first of its kind of PA. I was already doing it because of the teacher shortage. Our AIU, and, I, and I've worked with a lot of AIUs, I can honestly say this is you know the most impactful AIU I've ever got to work for. They're always ahead of the game. Um, Ohio's been doing it, but it's a collaboration between Bloom Board and Point Park University, which we're lucky, that's in Pittsburgh. This is the only one in the state in PA. Right now, there's a cohort that's going to be starting in the spring for our paraprofessionals, for any secretaries that might have 60 college credits right now. Within two years, they could possibly get a bachelor's degree and a certificate to teach just special ed right now. That's it's only for special ed because we have more emergency certificates in special ed now than we do actually licensed professionals. So this is a start. I, we presented this to all of our paraprofessionals uh, over the last few weeks. Um, so it, hopefully we might get one or two people. The AIU has 20 or no, no, 25 slots for the whole AIU. So I don't know how that's going to work out. And the cost is right around $16,500. Now we already have something in place in the contract for some tuition reimbursement. But we may have to think down the road, how would this work for us? Because it's not only, you know, financially, but we are going to have to work it out logistically because these are people already working in our, in our schools. So that's something that the administrator will have to look out for. Um, great idea. And hopefully, it, you know, that's a start. We know the certifications, are, you know, Pennsylvania is short in every area. So that's a start um, for us to get moving. They said they might be able to expand it to some, some other certifications in the future. Uh, yes, sir, audit, we do have, we, we, we did meet today, but Van and I met today with the auditors coming in in a couple weeks. Uh, we're going to be meeting with uh, you know, some of the admin staff in a few weeks to, just to prepare for it, look at some things that they found. Um, we gave a report when they left, but there was a bigger report that came this summer, I guess, that we got to address some things as well. So. So we're going to work on that over the next few weeks to be ready for this audit. The conversation went pretty well today, though. I mean, yeah, I'm sure that they're coming in because we didn't respond to that. Yeah, that's why normally they wouldn't come in. Like they came in March. Normally they would at least wait a year, but I think um, so. But we're going to work through and we're going to have an answer for every one of those. We're going to be responded to them, and then that should um, close that door. And then. Um, the good thing is they will, uh, they're only going to be auditing from March to now, today. Um, we have to supply everything <laughs> back to the yeah, start of, since, the, since the start of everything, but they're only going to be looking at um, items from 
from March to now. Okay. So that's that's the makes it a lot easier pulling <laughs> invoices and POs and everything if it's a shorter period of time. Yeah. We did apply last week for the Ready to Learn grant. It's approximately you see the number up there, um, and you can see where we're going to be devoting that money to. Again, maintaining K through three class size reduction. Um, so this will help with two kindergarten teacher salaries and benefits. Five thousand dollars for purchasing materials to establish parent resources for our EL students, because um, we know that's uh, our EL student population is beginning to grow. ESL. It's called yeah, ESL. It's, it's, it's called EL. EL now. Yeah, or EL. Is it EL? EL. Yeah. So it's changed. It, it was ESL. Um, $150,000 for maintaining our Spanish program by paying the salary and benefits of those two teachers. Um, so we just get that completed. That was due on November 30th. Is there any, um, like what's the filling on us like getting it? Is it a guarantee or is it? It's a guarantee. guarantee. Okay. We just had to get the application in by okay. November 30th. Last thing I had, Westinghouse football team. I gave an update last week on the previous week, but also this week they just beat Farrell in the quarterfinals. They were, by the way, they were down 14-0 in the beginning, and then they were down at 10 minutes left, 20-12, to and came back and won the game 36-20. to Wow. Yeah. How, many wow. Our, how many of our kids are famous um, here, do you know? I think the last time I asked, it was right around 12 to 15 of our nice. local first students. That's really great. Yeah. Um, it is a team. I've seen them get down in our last game. They they have a, the way he handles a team when they're down like that and there's no complaining. It's just you know, keep the stay on course. It's pretty impressive to watch. It really is. Um, Coach Green is amazing. It, it, the way he handles those kids. I mean, I just, it's yeah. just no complaining. Just we have time. Let's just keep work plugging away and stick to the game plan. They're so proud. They work so hard. And, mm -hmm. and like you said, last week he got the coach of the week for the Whitfields. Um, and this, I know this team is talented probably because they're younger than the last year's team and they're still winning. This is a young team. Yeah. Um, and they're in the semifinals this, again this week against Beaver Falls. They win the go state championship again. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there will be another challenge against Beaver Falls, you know, the history of football. So, um, but I just want to at least mention that uh, they, they, you know, we got a lot of our kids there. So. But I'll get the exact numbers. I'm, I'm guessing it's 12 15 the last time he told us. So this is the last game before the state, state championship. championship. And then on the other side of the state, Southern Columbia is back in it again. They're a team that's in it every year. So they're probably going to beat them last year. Won't beat them last year. So. Is this the game that'll be at the at Acroshore? The, well, the, when I look, it wasn't decided yet, but it's probably decided, but I didn't get a chance to look yet. It's not going to be at Acroshore. Okay. That was the Whitfield Championships. We're not yeah. in Whitfield. Got it. Okay. That's so, what I was thinking of. Okay. So we don't know where this game's going to be yet. It's probably online somewhere now. It wasn't scheduled for, uh, the other day. So it's somewhere in between here and Beaver Falls, it's supposed to be. I think they're playing in West Allegheny. West Allegheny? I think that's Which, what which is closer to us. I'll be honest with you. We played now two or oh, three rounds of, of football, and it was always at pretty much their home field, mm -hmm. which is kind of weird to me. So. Well, one thing I can say, they have a big turnout. Their alumni down there, the sport is absolutely yeah. excellent. They brought bus loads last year. To the yes, they did. Good <laughs> mm -hmm. Next slide. Some updates that are coming up. Important dates at Turner Intermediate and Kelly Primary. Again, we'll get these on the board calendar if they're not already there. Uh, we know Light Up Literacy Night is, we enjoy that. Uh, we also are doing a winter concert this year um, on December 14th. So, um, so we're looking forward to, to these winter events. And I'll add one more important date is December 5th, because that's the reorg meeting, right? Mm -hmm. December, December 5th, 5th. reorg. Yes. yes. Which is next week. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, next slide. All right. Before I get to the board members that are leaving, I just want to recognize one of our employees who I luckily had the pleasure to work with for about a year and a half, maybe two years. Um, but I'll be honest with you, and I think I said this before, is I've got to see her actually flourish even more over the last year, working with her directly in the Teach Plus program um, as our, you know, our Equity Leadership Institute under the Teach Plus program. 
Um, she got a scholarship. I believe you got a scholarship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some type of to the conference. So she actually went, I know this, she went to the Black Men in Education Convening Conference. Um, she might both speak about that. Um, but Diane's been a special education teacher in the district a very long time. And I always think sometimes it's something that makes somebody actually come out of their shell because she just kind of taught special ed and that's how I knew her. But now she took a leadership role and I have up there this Adventures in Teamwork event that we did a couple weeks ago um, at the Sherwood Event Center. And it came, I didn't know what to expect, I'll be honest with you. I didn't have a lot of information and I kind of, I turned over to Teach Plus pretty much to Joblin this year because with everything going on, I didn't know what to expect. It was our whole team, our admin, our post school teams, and we had to do some pretty interesting things. Um, teamwork come out of our shells people working together who normally wouldn't work together um and then we had to present and and, and it was quite an interesting day but we all left uh, we were well fed um had some team working skills and it came off very well and i just want to give diane a shout out for that i want to give her a coin for her effort over last year Couldn't make it, but she was in, at the conference. So I just wanted to say thank you for taking the leadership role because this is a big undertaking. It was a lot of work just for me to, to do things, and she <laughs> just took the bull by the horns and made it happen. So did you enjoy the conference? So thank you, Miss Next slide. All right. Um, I definitely want to at least take a moment to thank these four people. <laughs> um, I just want to say thank you because when I first came on the board, the only th or came on um, as superintendent working with the board, the only thing that I did ask is I wanted a board that, you know, especially since we were going to be virtual, it was a board that, you know, we're, we're professional. People are looking at us all the time. We have to come off as professionals, and we're going to disagree. That's it. Without a doubt, we're always going to disagree. But that's okay. Families disagree. Families argue. Families debate. But in the end, um, you know, sometimes majority rules, but we're professionals. Um, and because now with virtual, people see us in the community. And I think, you know, like I said, Dr. Iverson left this district in, in better than she found it. And hopefully, and I know the board members are leaving, have left this district better than they found it when they came in. So that's a constant improvement. And I think that's the goal of, you know, new superintendents coming in and new board members coming in is to leave the place better than they found it. And I think, and I, I've mentioned that in the past at some events, how, how the board over the last 10 years, um, what they've done for this district and, and we see a lot of great things happening um, and a lot of unique things. And I, I always say, even, even the collaborative with Pittsburgh Public, that's unique. But a lot of schools are going to be doing that in the next 10, 15 years. Uh, but you keep your small local elementary schools and so on. Uh, but feel good about what you accomplished. I want to say thank you for your commitment to our students, commitment to our staff, uh, willing to have the debates, the, the, the arguments, and uh, but professionally, we stuck to the mission and we stuck to the vision of the school district. And I think that was the important thing um, as we did this. So I just want to quickly give some certificates and some coins. Oh. So. Are they silver? <laughs> they are not silver. Oh. Are they Kruger rods? Yeah. <laughs> so just. Again, if so, Beth Ann wants them. They're from the right, park. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Just to remind you, uh, well, well, Denny did approve these. You're what did I he? ordered them. Yes. Yeah, Denny did approve these. So, <laughs> just to remind you, um, a truly amazing teacher, and it, you are teachers. I just want you to remember that. Anytime that we're always engaging with kids, you are teachers. Um, you're supporting our teachers are in front of our students every day, but you are teachers, you're educators. Trust me. 
you've helped teach me. You've helped teach my staff as well. A truly amazing teacher is hard to find, difficult to part with, and impossible to forget. And we have the banners on that are out in front of Turner, pride, honor, hope, and respect. Um, and these are specially made just for uh, Wilkinsburg School District. So I wanted to make sure I gave, give each of you guys a certificate um, and also give you a coin just to remember the work that you've done and thank you for what you've done. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Mr. Mr. Rose. I got to work with Mr. Rose a lot closely because we were on the safety committee and brought a lot of great things to the table. So thank you. I appreciate your professionalism, your dedication to school safety. It was so. a pleasure. Thank you. So I love a lot of work with you. And I've worked a lot of work with you. Thanks for bringing everything back from the conferences. Dr. Bossick. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And again, you know, having worked with him, you know, I tell you, what, he goes through those invoices regular <laughs> in detail. We get my, I get my list every time. And, and, glasses. and by the way, <laughs> we have a new box for you. I think. <laughs> I put it in the back. I, yes. Taj, thank you again. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. You, you know, you came in at the right time, but we appreciate what you brought to the table. The professionalism, the dedication, the support for our students and staff. Thank you guys. Thanks for a lot. Me. I wish you well in the real estate. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Deb, just because I do work a little bit closer with Deb, I just wanted to get her a little some because Deb, I, I spent a lot of time with Deb over the last year. Um, <laughs> Deb was tough on me. I'm not going to lie, and I, I've said that before. Deb was very tough on me, but I've appreciated that because I've appreciated her. And I, I'm going to use this slide for everybody, but I think this is important. I, I ordered this. This I did get an extra coin for you, um, but this could go for everybody. Um, this is what we use for the military, and I gave Coach Green one of these coins as well because I appreciated. We went through a lot together. We hammered a lot of things out. She, her, her emails are tough to me on a Saturday, and we're going back and forth. Um, but one thing that I do appreciate, and I, to, I probably told her this a thousand times, she's never held a grudge. She never held a grudge, and she never undermined the mission and vision of the district. And that's all we can ask for. I'm never, and I said I'll never ask for somebody to, to always agree with me. And I've said that about people here. If they disagree with me, it's probably because I didn't give the information. I didn't give enough information. Um, and it's on me. And I know she looks through things with a fine tooth comb, which I appreciate as well. And now that transition of not having, and we all know not having a business finance person for the time, the period that we did was tough transition. Um, so I appreciate that. And for the whole board, this goes for all of you. And we always say this leadership in, in the military, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. And that's what it takes sometimes to be a leader. Some of the decisions that you've made, some of the decisions past board members have made, it's tough. And you're not getting paid for it. Um, and it takes some of the things, loyalty to the district, duty to do what's right for our kids and our staff, um, respect for one another, selfless service, because you know it's not, it's not selfish service, that's for sure. It's not the time that you guys spend here. Um, honor and to do the right thing. And my favorite one is integrity. Um, never undermining that mission and vision and always doing the right thing um, when nobody's watching. And the personal courage to make the tough decisions that sometimes that we have to make and the tough decisions that some of these board members had to make 10 years ago. Um, and the last thing is to put the mission first. First, always, you know, we didn't accept defeat. Even when things hit us tough, we drive on, we don't stop, uh, we don't quit, um, and we picked each other up at times. You know, there was some tears or some battles and so on, but sometimes we had to pick each other up to just keep moving on. So I appreciate, you know, what this group brought to the board. Sad to see some of you leave. Um, I, I appreciate your professionalism, your dedication, um, and your commitment to our students, our staff, and the school district. So thank you, and thank you, Deb. Appreciate it. Thank you. I couldn't say it any better than what... Ed did at the beginning. I mean, he, he pretty much nailed it over there. So, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm touched. Very touched.
I'm speechless. I don't know how tough I was on it, but I really enjoyed um, working with Dr. Joe. I think you put together a really strong team. I'm so excited about what you've you know, done this past year. Uh, this board as a whole has worked together, really. We have, um, I, I just can't thank you enough for all of the work that, you know, the board has done to help Dr. Joe and his team uh, move this school district. Um, you made us do it. Happy. <laughs> she, she was already questioning me stuff on since so she got here tonight. So <laughs> she's right out the door. <laughs> well, there's still things that you know that we that we have a long ways to go, but we've we come a long way. But thank you, thank you all. Um, thank you to all the board members. Thank you. As will be missed. And I wish you well. But that's the end. We'll oh, miss of your you. I like wanted to circle back. That to, is mine. I wanted to circle back to the uh, the program for Paris uh, at the IU. Yes, I know we have two, maybe three. Yes, that are at that sixty credit threshold. We have one who's really close to the one hundred twenty eight degrees to, uh, credits to get a degree. So, uh, in my opinion, everybody, whatever we can do to help them cross that threshold and get certified, because if they get tuition reimbursement, they promise to stay with us. Mm -hmm. You know, and the uh, can't ask for anything better than that. So if there might be some creative scheduling, whatever has to happen, but whatever we can do to get some number yeah. through that program would be great. I just, I'm so glad the intermediate unit's doing that. Yeah, no, I agree, I agree. So I think we can get some, some people to do it. They had to fill out the survey by yesterday, so hopefully we got a few filled out. Thank you. Thank you. Guys are making me cheer up here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm done. I really am done. Um, okay, I guess we can um, move on. Thank you, Dr. Uh, to curriculum reports. I'm going to go through these minutes and just put them in here. So we, at the curriculum committee meeting, we talked about um, our partnership with the Wildenberg Children's Library to support families in the community. Um, we've started doing that with the uh, social worker intern that's there, and we've also worked with um, Riley Smider, our social worker here in the district, to, to, to get that going. We really just introduced uh, Thea Brown, who's that social worker intern, to everybody here. Um, we don't have too much to talk about about it yet. It's just started. Uh, we also were fortunate to have an ESS presentation, so um, I don't remember the name of the person who presented. Can't remember. PSSA. The ESA. The ESS. Oh, ESS. Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, name. Well, starts with an M, I think. Yeah, but she. She's, um, she's the. The presentation is attached in uh, those minutes there. Um, she just gave us a rundown of where we're at right now. We don't have yet have like data, I would say, uh, about what we're doing there. But it was just more of like what we've been able to do since August, uh, talking about the number of, of children that were getting services. We're, we're just about at 10 in each building, from what I recall. I think it's 9 and 10. 9 right. and Kelly and 10 at Turner, I think. Yeah, um, we should have mid-year data, probably January or February. Yeah, and that's what we talked about. We're, we can do that. Um, for special education, we talked about some of the training that the paraprofessionals are going to do. They participated in training on November 15th. Um, and it was about how that has shifted. There's those new guidelines that they have to be dated with. I can't remember the name of it. Those guidelines, the new guidelines. So Jeanette has a uh, plan for how the paras are going to get up to speed over the next, I think it's 18 months. Yeah, she, she's broken it down. So there's a, there's a series of new guidelines for paraprofessionals that they need to meet. Okay. So she's, she's, she's on it. She's on it. Um, we, did we get the presentation on the numbers of who's enrolled in, I, did we do this? Because it, it, here it says total special education enrollment as of October 31st presented in executive session, but I don't think we actually held an executive session for those numbers. She did send it through email. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Everyone check out it. Yeah. Right. It was sent to us, not. Right. Yeah. Right. We didn't Thank have you. an executive session. That, that's what threw me off because I was like, we didn't have so okay. Um, uh, we approved for a long-term sub to replace a teacher that went on FMLA to start today during that meeting. 
Uh, for curriculum, we did the updated school calendar that was to line up with the new contract. So we had to do some half days had to be added, some other days, uh, full days off had to be added. And then there were letters that went out for that update. Um, we also approved two kits for the phonological awareness and then approved training for ECRI and Envision Math. Those invoices are attached there to this agenda item. Uh, we looked at the beginning of the year Acadian's data, uh, which on its own, I would say, doesn't really have a lot of like information other than, what is it, fourth grade and sixth grade are really hard. <laughs> I mean, that's really what you can take away from that. Uh, we're you know, going to look at that in more context when we get middle of year and end of year data. That's really where it'll start to, we'll start to see some things, because we, we want to see growth, right? Yeah. Um, we just clear, yeah. And it did allow us to think about, you know, is that the right data or should we look at something else? And that's where we talked about the CDTs possibly implementing next year. Yeah. Um, there's some discussion in here about like what interventionists will do based on the data. Sorry. I'm, yeah. And then we scheduled that PSSA dating meeting that we were all at last week. So thank you all <laughs> for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then the SHAPE conference, we have that on our agenda tonight to approve for Casey Feldman to request to attend that for January 11th. Um, that has to do with like getting more information about uh, physical education uh, and, and connecting more to the students that, that may be outside that have uh, additional needs, students, English language learners, um, and students with um, disabilities. And then we talked about report cards. It was a very brief discussion. We really didn't discuss them much. It was more just like, are they, what is their purpose? <laughs> are they meeting that purpose? Is there something else we should start looking into in terms of like um, plainer language? to discuss what our students meeting their goals. And then Westinghouse Student Voices update. We still don't. Yeah, just to give you an update, uh, I did send out emails last week about tonight. And they're, they're tough to work with. Um, I haven't got a response about them being here tonight. No, it was on the agenda. Yeah. I took it off um, once, I, once I didn't get a response back again. We'll have to, I guess we'll have to see. Try to get the students to show up. Yeah, yes. what, what we can do, what, what way we can change that. And then parent engagement meetings. Um, you know, there were 47 parents that were interested at Kelly that signed up for the back to school night. Um, and we would like to start meeting. Um, there were six parents that attended last May's uh, interest meeting, and those six parents are ready to start meeting, so I don't know where that can happen. Um, yeah, I talked to one of the parents that's one of the six that was there in May, and Kelly had said, you know, the reason why we had no Turner sign-ups is because nobody worked Turner that night, so um, we're ready. We just, yeah. I saw you sent dates out in the time. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. We should go to get one in December, I think. Yeah, because like I, like I said to you, Dr. Joe, the idea is that we would have somebody that, you know, has a, some sort of role in the district that would come talk to the parents about ways in which we could then partner with them, right? You know, Riley Smider was a, one suggestion about, like, what she, what her efforts are as a social worker here in the district and what we can do to, like, help. And then the parents would then discuss, like, how will we be able to, like, support that how can we support that that would be a great night for julia to be there too julia pollard our hso coordinator yes yes so if we could do that before the christmas holiday because i saw you had some dates. well i don't think that's going to happen i don't think any of those dates are going to happen because it looked like any december dates were going to conflict with that. a lot of yeah so beginning in january i think would be a good idea just beginning in january and the dates that i come up with were uh once a month switching buildings so one month it would be at Turner, the next month at Kelly, and then alternating the week of the month and the day of the week. So that like if you can't make it in January, you, there might be a better chance you can make it in February kind of thing. 
Could you, I haven't seen the numbers. Is there a certain amount of parents that are from Turner or a certain amount from Kelly or no? Right now they're all Kelly interest, but that's because we haven't been able to get, there was just nobody that could work the Turner uh, back to school night. When you say nobody, no, we have parents. 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 No, I think, it was 47 that were all at Kelly. Yeah, but did they have a registration system at Turner that night? I don't know. I think they did. None of the parents that I talked to that were that are on this list of the six. I'll that, verify tomorrow. I thought yeah. that they had a, the same registration system with it online or no? I thought they did too, but if nobody was there, then nobody. What was. I heard was that there was just. I'll verify tomorrow yeah. and get back to the board on that. But I, I think it's time to just get some dates, start meeting, start start doing right. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because they've also been discussing, because they want volunteer opportunities. Like the parents want to start getting together and, like I said, partnering with the district. What are the initiatives the district's doing? How can we help support those efforts? You know? It's usually between Thanksgiving and Christmas, it's hard because yeah, everybody, everybody yeah. has so many yeah, engagements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, you know, it's just hitting that a January date. And, and start there. Yeah, January through May and, and just go from there. Okay. Great. Is anyone emerging uh, uh, with leadership potential within the parents group? Like, absolutely. Is there, is there something? Is there a? I know we don't want to use that PTA term because you have to pay money to use that. But is not there some kind of a leadership? You know what I mean? A little bit of training for how to be a how to be a PTO leader. I'm just yeah. throwing this so out. I would the, hope that there would be one of the parents uh, that is one of that core group of six. Uh, is Felicia Davis. She's one of the parents that we sent to the SPS SPAC conference right. in June. So she is ready. Yeah, I mean, she's ready. I, I've talked to her too, and she's ready I've to talked be. talked to Felicia a few times. So. Yeah, she's, she's, she's good to go. So what do you think? I know we're not talking about till January, but what do you think she needs in order to be able to like send out a note to all the parents on that list and say? So we kind of have like a, like a, distributed level of like um, uh, responsibility right so so right now one of the parents has that list of users and would gladly just email those users those, those parents and say what we're, we're going to meet we'd like to see just a flyer go out to all parents with the that's, dates that's you know, january through may dates intent. right and just say you know Child care and, and pizza. Can you schedule a time maybe to yeah. meet with Rachel just to hash out the dates and the times that work for everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and really, I mean, it doesn't have to work for all the parents, right? It just, as long as the buildings, it doesn't conflict with something that's already on the schedule for right. the buildings. We just have them, and then we can start developing those processes of how to like keep in touch with everybody. Because the whole idea is to have it be parent led and driven, right? Yeah. yeah. We just, Need a, I know they'll need support. Yeah, and and like access to the building and stuff like of that, course. and then and you know that child care piece and the and the dinner, you know, pizza. Yeah. So those those are that's really what that's we we'll have to probably sit down and figure out how to do that. Right. Access to the, the building. Pizza part's not the problem. Trying to figure out how to do the child care. Right. Which again, you know, that's part of Title One. You know, funds should be able to pay for that. Um, I mean, you know, What's that? Community involvement. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, there's some child care facilities that offer that kind of service. Sure. Too. Yeah. Yeah, because they have to have all the parents and stuff. Yeah. So. yeah, I see some emails going around. It might be best if you guys just come together, or I can be there with you guys and try to figure out all that. All one hour meeting. All right, let's put these dates down. How we do child care, how, you know, pizza. Yeah, pizza that sounds party. good. Because the parents are ready. <laughs> They're ready to meet. I mean, They've got some ideas. They want to start a laundry program uh, to wash uniforms or just in general laundry. You know, we've talked about maybe doing a you know twice a year uniform swap, like a clothing swap for kids. Um, yeah, they've got lots of ideas. So just just having the dates and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll get together. Okay, and I know Felicia. You know, oh yeah, and like I said, she's ready. Okay. Great, thank you. Kelly Renovation Ad Hoc Committee. I know okay. we've been busy. Real busy. A change. Talk about a moving target. Something's happening about this every other day. So I'm not going to review the report. It's attached. It was current as of two days ago. Uh, in the meantime, the, the only things I'd ask you to add to that report would be Canon Design has gotten in touch with Bill Cray. They're revising a lot of their initial work. 
to work in that they would accept the D&D uh, uh, &D plans that we already have and some of the underwriting that's already been done that would bring their costs down a whole lot. <laughs> I think that's Canada saying we want the job and we're willing to, at first they were saying no, we got to do everything ourselves. Now they're saying sure, we'll use some of the work you already have. So at least it keeps them in the running because in my report to you I said they're out of the running. So. I guess they don't want to be out of the running. Um, Anne Fallenkamp, even though she's not even under contract yet, is already submitting ideas for things that she thinks would be awesome to do with Kelly, no matter who the architect is. That's really great. And maybe most important of all, um, I, I approached Bill about his fees, and he's willing to reduce that by 50% for, for a six-month agreement to get us to the point where, where we would be really serious about stuff. We may need to up it at that point. I don't know. But I was really glad that we were able to get him to drop that to 50 percent so i'll work pardon me Bill. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i don't want to talk about dollars that we no, should I do that for him. so i just want to make sure i heard bill That's yes like, i'm a fan of bill so yeah yes yeah. so. so i'll work with matt to have a draft of actually it can be the same agreement just reduce the amount of money and then circulate that around to make sure that we can do it but those are three really good developments i think in addition to what's in the report mm -hmm. now should great. i update the re maybe i'll update the report in a minute no you you guys know okay so I was really discouraged as of last week, and then all of a sudden, in two days' time, things can really turn around. And they change for the better. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I want to, yeah, thank Denny and and Ed because they really, really kind of like been coordinating all of this, all of this stuff, um, and it's like mind-boggling sometimes what to do because you go back and forth. It's like a roller coaster. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. It's one of the things that we. have done our due diligence on making sure we've explored everything that we we have to explore um, and how do we make it work for um, the kids. So safety and security committee report. I, you got this one? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to uh, interject, I, I was basically going to start by saying that the uh, the, the regular meeting was that was going to be held on the 2nd was uh, pushed back to the 15th. You know, I, on that day, I was uh, battling an air infection. I wasn't able to go, but Dr. Joe and Beth Ann held it down in my stead. Um, yeah, I was just gonna. Did you want to just read the? Oh, you have it? Yes. Yeah, oh, you did. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think. Yeah. All right. So, um, so basically, what what we've been discussing is uh, the Emergent Three um, program. Uh, it's about like getting us uh, like cameras, more cameras around the school and stuff like that. Uh, Brett Handel, he gave another demonstration, um, uh, a video demonstration uh, to it proactively identify as weapons and other threats. Um, it's, sim to it's similar to what we have in the wall system, but on the X tier. So it's kind of, kind of another of a layer, but it's an X tier where it picks up the weapons from people coming in. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, they're they're starting to use these for Fortune 500 companies now too. Um, yeah, so it, it there's a uh, some weaknesses to it. They're still working out some kinks. I'm, I'm getting from this uh, one false detection for for 16 camera streams per day. Yeah, I mean it's really low. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it is low. I asked, and that was my question: How many false detections? So they have people on the other side that they're hired to just watch them take care of it and make yeah, the 911 the alarm call. goes off if the computer senses that there could be a weapon and so then they go and look at the stream it said about what three Twelve. minutes is their response time three minutes yeah that's so three minutes. between the alarm going off and them and them actually contacting the police i mean it's wow. fast yeah yeah it's real quick so this goes to evolve goes to a, a central Dispatch kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not evolved, but it's no. uh, oh, it's see. similar to the evolved system, but on the exterior cameras, and it works with I existing see. cameras. So, kind of what we'll do over the next couple of months is continue to look at different things for better layered support, mm -hmm. to where we can budget appropriately next year for anything that we might need. Because I don't know if my new director of business will allow me to purchase anything. Right? <laughs> <laughs> is that right? Says twenty percent. If, if it sees twenty percent of a weapon, it's 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 going it's on. A detector in it. Okay. Yeah. So they were even saying like in a pocket or like you know hand over it in the pocket, mm -hmm. it'll still detect. Oh. It's pretty. Yeah. I mean the the video that they did was pretty interesting. They used a 
current case, current in case the news, yeah. and said that you know what would have happened if they had had their cameras, the no one would have probably been heard. And of course, I do my due diligence with talk to other school districts mm -hmm. that are using there's one or two local ones that are using. Yeah, it. how is the involved working out? Good. It's we. It's one thing that's nice. It's not holding mm -hmm. students coming into the building. Where you know you're always concerned is it going to be a backlog of students? So now the students are getting used to pulling the uh, Chromebooks. the Chromebooks out, so they yeah. already know to take the Chromebook out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So, Something on the keyboard looks like a gun. Yeah. So. Oh. <laughs> but no, it's it's working well. They have it's well organized with both schools. Who's on what? Who's looking at what? And who's actually watching people come through and, and can de detect it right away and. Luckily, we haven't detected. Anything. But these, like the airport scanners, you know, you have to, is it a it's, similar thing? Actually, if you go to any of the stadiums, they're using Evolve right now. Mm -hmm. PPG, Hinesfield, and uh, PNC are all yes. using Evolve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's just two things. It's not even like a. Yeah, I've seen them. I yeah. used to know how it works. It just catches it as soon as you walk through. Really have bad. we caught anything? Um, last night. I don't think we've caught really okay. anything yet. We haven't caught anything, but um, Officer Boyd's had uh, one of his um, tested it. Yeah, he yeah, tested, tested it. With, okay. Yeah, he has like a constable, I guess, organization that he works with, and he's a constable. He had one of the constables come in and walk through with their, you know, concealed carry firearm and picked it up. And it picked it up. Yeah, and I think he said he brought his machete to, to test it and picked it up. He had it like he had it like he had it like in his. Okay. Like pocket or in his coat or whatever, and he walked through and picked it right up. Okay. Yeah. Good. We're going to make sure it works. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, for that much money. It can't hear like, it can't detect like if it hears like gunshots, like where it came from or anything. Is that an audible well, thing? This video. Yeah. Right, right. But, um, you know, he, there's, there's uh, the engineers are looking to make sure that like what they're doing can integrate with what we're doing. So, IT. You know, RIT is talking to their IT, 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 if I have this right. Um, but the cameras are 720p. Yeah. Uh, All of our cameras are 1080p, so we should be good. Oh. Yeah. Um, exploratory phase security officers don't carry weapons. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. No, no, I understand. I, I was there okay. last month trying to read my own notes. It was like, uh, all right. Um, yeah. So basically, to pricing, uh, pricing is a three-year um, for for twenty-five cameras would be fifteen thousand. Uh, for hundred, it would be thirty-six thousand. That's a it says zero eyes. That's, that's, a, that's another company that's, 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 that's called zero eyes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, we wouldn't really need more than twenty-five. Really, I mean, but I mean, ten per school, right? Yeah. You, the main areas where you want them is the entryways. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we probably that probably wouldn't do it for our schools. And uh, security uniforms are in. Hmm. All right. Yeah, so, we we did want all the security and they, and they want actually they kind of wanted to. I don't know how Officer Boyce wanted it that much. He didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't too happy about it. But. So they they got uniforms. They picked the place where to get them, and we looked at the list. And so they're all going to the same. Yeah. One last thing. Uh, uh, review of workplace injury reports. So we had a, a fall in the parking lot. Is that from like, um, yeah, I wasn't going to say any names. I wasn't going to say I'm not but, saying any names either. Right, right. <laughs> of course. But, but was that from the ground? Like, uh, it was uh, loose gravel in the, okay. where the trailers were. Oh. Uh, so, Mr. Okay. So Brosiak was there. I'm happy to see that, okay. that everybody's okay. They were back to work in a couple hours. Yeah. All right. I'm glad that there's that safety report because those are the things you have to work on. And yeah, she's taken over that part of it now. So she's done it before yeah. in her previous district. For workers' so. comp, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's all. Thanks for taking care of it. Hey, thank you. Know you had. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Like I said, thank you. Wow. Okay. okay. Thank you. Policy committee. So. Uh, we had policy committee last month, Tuesday, November 14th, um, and while I was there, I'm going to let Joe give the report. Is much more familiar with policies. Yeah. Yes, go for it. All right, um, just going to have one there. Um, I'll just go down through them right now. 
The one policy that we, we have a lot of second reads on policy, 819, suicide awareness, prevention and response. Uh, I, I did edit that policy to, instead of, we usually do a second and final read. I'd like to do a third read uh, with the committee on that because we had a lot of changes on it. Uh, Matt came back with a couple things, but as you'll see tonight, we need a um, suicide prevention coordinator. Um, yeah, yeah, I was just going to say, uh, for, for Forbes Road, we just, uh, they just approved their suicide prevention. It's a 10 page long thing. So yeah. if you, if you'd like to, I, and I swear to God, I meant to you bring it was tonight. Forbes Road? Yeah. I can reach out to Miss Post. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they just I'm passed. Let me make sure I talk to you afterwards. Okay. okay. I'm curious too. Um, so we're going to we're going to approve her tonight and hopefully approve her tonight suicide prevention coordinator. Um, but we we do have some changes to it. So um, and we'd like to take another read at it. This is one because it is a long one. and I want to make sure we get it right. Um, so the only thing other things we had is, you know, we have staff participating in it. Uh, Matt did address some things on grades delete grades six through twelve. We referred to his email on how to, to make sure that's done. Um, if you want to take a look at, and that's recommend selecting, what was that, suicide? Numbers four, five, and six. I did ask Matt on a couple other things that he got back to me on, like number nine and so on. But to get a chance to take a look at it, because there's going to be a third, we'd like to do a third review. Uh, policy 607 tuition income or tuition income. The only thing we had in there is change the director of business and operations to director of finance and operations. There was really no need for any additional. These are the PSBA recommended. There's no, they're not big um, changes, major changes. Uh, it's policy 608 bank accounts. Uh, and we changed the wording, I believe, if we got this correct, Matt, we changed the one sentence from the board shall to the board may obtain yes. quotations. Um, other than that, no, no revisions needed. Policy 612, purchases not budgeted. Um, we just, the only thing changes to this, there was some more legal citations that were added and changing the title of the business manager, director of finance and operations, and then add superintendent to the one section. Um, policy 619, district audit. Um, we looked at some more citations that were added on that. PSBA recommends to include under authority and deleting last two paragraphs and, and one through six to replace with audits by special interest groups are not permitted. Policy 620, financial reports and statements. It was recommended to delete this policy, um, and then uh, it was recommended to delete this policy, and then recommend policy 620 fund balance. Again, these are all second readings, and we discussed last month. And PSBA, the, the new one's policy 620 fund balances. And again, the only really thing we wanted to change on that was business manager to director of finance and operations. Um, all right, and we have first reading on policy 317, conduct and disciplinary disciplinary procedures. Uh, Matt gave some feedback on that. We need to, and he actually sent me a form, a designated form. If somebody, they have 72 hours to report an occurrence of a conviction, arrest or a conviction. Um, and he did actually give me an actual uh, document for that. And he gave us a clarification on number nine, and that was just carrying or onto or possessing a weapon on school grounds without authorization from the appropriate school administrator. That's pretty much referring to for any um, police that may be coming in school, I believe. Because um, right now our security officers don't, or our security guards don't carry. Um, policy 317, educator misconduct. Um, I don't think there was any major one. I don't recall if there were. I don't think there was. And I actually have the email. <clears throat> Policy 811, bonding. Um, and, and this really the thing is, is that they will recommend that employees will be bonded. Who will be bonded? Uh, by PA law, it's the board secretary and the treasurer. Okay. And the last one is policy. And these are just, there's not major changes. If you look at the new the old policy and the new policy, again, these are first reads. We'll do a second read. 
They're very short policies. Um, and the last one was policy 812, property insurance. I think, believe you did give me a recommendation on that one, but it wasn't major on that one either. Because you, you mentioned always oh, something with, whether you would appoint a, I forget the term, terminology was in the policy. Yeah, it was appointing, I can pull it up. <laughs> An agent. Uh, yeah. yeah. As opposed to using a insurance broker's consultant. And it already stated that in the paragraph, right? Right. So those are policies. Uh, those last few are all going to be first reads. We have a second read, and I would prefer a third read on the suicide prevention policy. Um, that's all I have. Okay. Any questions? Or policies? We've got ten of them this time. Dr. Yeah. Joe keeps bringing new ones mm -hmm. to to. Uh, now we just got to keep making sure they get updated in the system. Right. So. Um, finance committee report. The finance committee met on uh, two, last Tuesday um, at 5:30, and um, really it was the first time Beth Ann really kind of led the the finance committee meeting. Um, uh, and she brought with her John McShane from uh, Stifle Public Finance, and John gave a brief overview of the district's debt and the current market. For borrowing, should the district need to issue bonds for the Kelly renovations, which we will have to issue bonds for Kelly renovations, um, and it gets to that. Um, and one of the things uh, that he reviewed, and we should probably attach, and we didn't attach the handout that he gave. Uh, those members who attended received it, but we you want to attach to that. Yeah, if we could attach yep. it to this so all the board members have, so have that, um, that would be good. Um, but he recommended that the board pass a resolution to declare our intent to reimburse capital expenditures from the proceeds of potential borrowing. So, for example, if we, you know, are spending capital funds, which we are, uh, you know, right now, and we get a bond, by passing this resolution, we'll be able to reimburse ourselves, our, our, um, our general fund, with the proceeds of the bond, if needed. So um, That safeguards the fund balance. Right. It yes. safeguards using our own money and um, moving forward. So, and, and it doesn't mean that we've committed to anything now. It's just for the future. So uh, that's one of the recommendations, the board actions that we're recommending is to pass that resolution. Um, the other thing the, um, uh, for the board action item is we're looking to, uh, for the 2024-25 um, Act 1 index approval. Uh, the day we used to approve this, every, we have to approve this every year, so it says we're not going to increase taxes beyond the index that the state provides for us. Um, and they moved that date up. The state moved it up to December, but Beth Ann's on top of it, and she has us voting on it in <laughs> in November. So uh, those are the two board action items. Um, regarding the audit and the AFR, as we all know, the AFR that we have to submit to the state every year, that's due the end of November. We usually have the audit done by now. I was really disappointed it's not, but it's because but basically because of this ESSER fund that we've had to spend an incredible amount of time trying to um, get that straightened up. Um, so the audit is still ongoing, um, but uh, rather than file for an extension, JMA, um, our consultants, they're going to be filing the initial AFR. Uh, for us. And once the audit is finalized, then we can update it with the final audit numbers. But we thought we would go that route rather than um, ask for an extension and worry about not getting an extension. Um, the PDE 363, which is that form that uh, we use that is based upon uh, our uh, Expenditures um, that will be uh, redone um, also. That's what we use to uh, to base our tuition, our charter school tuition costs on. Um, but it was noted that the district's um, ADMs, our average daily membership, our attendance, you know, has gone down by a hundred in the past. So we're looking 
into that. I know that's one of the things that yeah. Ann said even this evening. She's still yeah. uh, digging into that. That affects sure our does. our tuition that we charge. So that they're the allowed, to, that they're allowed to pay that they yeah. that we have to pay to a charter. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It yeah, increases right the cost because we don't have as many students. Oh. So we really have to make sure that we're counting our students and getting those counts in and, and getting that taken care yeah, of. Yeah, Jeanette, I talked to Jeanette about it and she's concerned that um, she said that there are some chronic tart children that aren't in school. They're here like maybe 10% of the time. So she said that she didn't know if that was maybe what was driving that number down. The fact that those students aren't being accounted for two thirds of the school year right. or three quarters of the school year. Um, so yeah. that's one one you know one explanation. Uh, the other though, we need to just I need to go through the PPS uh, agreement and find out: Are we counting all of their students with our ADMs? Are they not being recorded in PIMS? Is there a way that we? We bring them in so that we can um, record them. Uh, we are paying for them. So it's not as though uh, they're going to PPS and they're paying for their education. So there's so there's definitely is some you know some things that just have to look through the agreement and make sure that we're accounting for everything properly. Um, I'm all I also have a call into PDE to see. If we can use our weighted ADM, yeah, <laughs> that would be nice, <laughs> and that would definitely drive the number down. So um, they haven't responded yet, um, and I'm gonna, I'm assuming I reviewed things in the past, and um, it's not usually the weighted number. Uh, so, but I thought can't hurt to ask and see if you know something's changed from year to year, and um, that definitely significant and drives down. I mean, it takes our uh, special, our regular ad down to 15 and our special ad down to 48. So if we could use that number, that would be. <laughs> but it has helped what you've done already. I mean, it has helped from what right. we submitted back in July. Right. So. But, um, but it's, it's still a concern. The, the attendance and the ADMs are. Right. I mean, our basic ad funding is all based on that. So it's really, really critical that we make sure that if we're supposed to be accounting those students that are going to PPS, that we figure out how we do that and make sure that that. I'm pretty goes. sure that the agreement assigns that to this group. Not really. Assigns attendance. I thought it was. was too. I said I'm pretty sure that it was in there. Because otherwise, we would have known all these months, all these years, we would know that those numbers were coming into us, and they never have. And so I'm, I would swear that. The agreement mm -hmm. states that attendance, they get to count the attendance. Um, but it's still, but there was worth a drop. It's worth a drop of 100. It doesn't matter if we haven't been doing it in the past. We've got to figure out where yes. right. that drop right. is. Drop and if attendance is, is a problem, I'm, um, we do have um, a new attendance um, officer, whatever. So we're hoping that that will help yeah. with the chronic attendance. Yeah, I'd like to know what, I don't know if we want to take time or not. We could do it at a different time. But I'd like to know what steps are we taking? When those chronic, uh, you know, chronic non-attenders are identified, especially when you throw out numbers like half or one third of the year or whatever that is, I mean, that's that's huge. And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. what's behind that in those families, and what can we do? Right. And my question too, like you know, Jeanette being the one saying like, look, 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 we have this population of chronic absenteeism. Um, yeah, we probably should have some sort of executive session to talk a little more in depth about that because my suggestion would be that. These are probably students that have some sort of disability, whether or not it's identified, you know, diagnosed or, or whatever, and then other issues around that, like what we can do there. Mm -hmm. But with all the other supports, so with social workers and right. everything else right. that we have, we have all these interventions that we should be addressing whatever those issues are. We were over 250, close to two, between 200 and 250 officially true students. Our actual attendance overall wasn't bad, up for 80%. But the same kids were missing all the time. So, you know, just to let you know, like now the the, the parent uh, attendance plans, the student attendance plans have they're required to be done. So those are now being done. They weren't being done right. before. Okay. So they are being done now. And the goal that I set for the staff and they agreed on the administrative staff is to get that those down to fifty for each school. 
So get us below 100. Yeah, because right now, you're, when you say that number, that's 50%. That's, yep. Yep. And that's incredible. That's a lot. That's, that's, that's a lot. lot. So, so whether now, some, some we'll, right. we'll get Julia involved in some. Some are just because <laughs> parents start allowing it in elementary school, it, it, because you can control it when they're but that right. young. But when they're. Yeah, but I, I know from my own experience, like I have a child right now who gets therapy once a week and that's outside of the school. I take that child, like, so, and some days I get a call, right? Like your child was absent today. And then, you know, that gets adjusted when I get the doctor's note in and get all that stuff in. But that's once a week that that's happening. Yeah, um, we have to follow state law on it because our policy states right. three days, we get three days for the excuse. So we're gonna have to, because everybody's kind of all over the place. So for consistency, we're doing the three days. State law, we're only allowed to request, get 10 parent excuses. <coughs> After 10 parent excuses, it has to be a doctor's excuse. It's re that's state law. It's been that for us. So we're kind of held to We it. haven't been doing that. Uh, that they've been, they've been kind of all over the place over the last couple of years. We've had two tenants officers to different buildings. So now we have one person handling <coughs> Clearly, we know what the goals are set for and what needs to be done. Every kid, once they hit, um, what would we say? I think it was four or five. I forget what the thing was set to. Once they hit that number, it initiates a teacher, uh, student attendance improvement plan. <coughs> Parents need to participate um, because once you get them more involved, and again, maybe we'll find out there's more to it. But we got to get it early, right? Yeah. You know? and, and I would say this is probably another area where partnering with a parent organization would be really helpful. You know, to have the parents be able to say like, "This is how we can support that," you know, and attendance and, and, uh, and all of that, and try and have the parents talk to parents, kind of thing. You know, yeah. well, this is one of the pieces of data too yeah. that we have not been getting as a board, right? That we need to know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but, so we're hoping to cut that in half this year. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so that's what the, but at least the uh, charter school tuition rates are going down a little. We want them to we wish they would go down a little bit more, and we think they can if, if we do some digging. Um, as far as grants, we discussed the SR3 uh, funds. They've been posted to fiscal year 23 because that was one of our holdups with the audit because they weren't, uh, uh, but the actual um, spent was increased from two and a half million to 3.3 million for fiscal year 23. It's not what we thought we were going to be charging there. This is the whole thing with the fund balance and how much we thought we were going to have. Um, there was a considerable amount of time spent on reconciling these ESSER funds. Um, and as Dr. Joe already said, the on-site ESSER monitoring um, is beginning uh, this month. Um, and we're hoping that we will be, we will be ready yes. uh, for that. Um, the PCCD grant is being revised and the timeline was extended to June of 2025. And then Beth Ann uh, reviewed the October financial uh, statements. Um, the bank accounts are reconciled or current up to date cash. We're in good cash position. Um, Beth Ann provided uh, a report comparing our last year expenses to this year's, and that was particularly helpful. In case you want to see these, the detail of these reports, the, uh, the agenda with all the attachments are actually on board docs. All you have to do is look at the finance committee. Um, our revenues are consistent with uh, last year. Um, the expenses, there's one expense that popped out to everybody, and that was benefits. We spent like 300,000 more in benefits by the end of October last year than what we did this year. And that's great is the fringe benefit um, upload. I've been trying to work with um, AMCA to figure out how I can get this balanced and, and have it prove out. Um, I may have to just process these, get them processed and work on balancing at a later date and then move forward yeah and so that's where i'm at right now because they're not giving me any any valuable information other than reassign all the employees to different groups <laughs> and, and use those groups that was their last when i was been pounding on them <laughs> well you could just enter all, all the employees over again and in different groups and i don't have time to do that right now Right. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a matter of time and what it is, what's the, the what you hope to get out of it. But the one thing that came up that was um, a, a bit um, uh, disturbing, we don't have a lot of detail, is that after reviewing the balance sheet and preparing the AFR, JMA, um, they discovered that there was an error on our fund balance, uh, that, that it was overstated by $2.9 million, and it goes all the way back to 2005. Wow. So where we thought we had a significant fund balance, um, what they're saying is it's overstated by $2.9 million dollars but again there was no way we would know that because it would just keep rolling over if it if the problem occurred back in 2005 and and the auditors did vary it in the in the fund balance they did carry this for a long time i mean and it's obvious if you look at the trial balance they don't prove out so um yeah it's frustrating i'm yeah. glad that gma is doing this they are um, on the outside looking at this. I think that if the auditors had done it this year, I wonder if they wouldn't have buried it, continued to bury it. They probably would have, because that yes. was the biggest thing. Why didn't the auditors? Why hasn't right. it Why is that right? Exactly. Right. I mean, that's a huge. Yes. Year after year after yeah. year. I mean, yeah. somebody is going to have to have words. Right, that's why I was hoping the audit would be done so we could have some words, but I hope you have words. <laughs> oh my God, because this is this is not insignificant, $2.9 million. I'll bother to run a whole lot, yeah, a whole yeah. lot. And I, I guess, is there any kind of accountability when the auditors miss it, or no? I don't know. You have money or you don't. Yeah, that's just yeah. Right. yeah. I was right. I mean, it's, and yeah. that's what, you know, that's, literally, literally, that's, that's what I was thinking. That's yeah. what all his numbers were off by, that $3 million. Wow. But if it was carried over, I'm sure there wasn't any digging into it like JMA has been digging. It's almost like they're doing it at a um, forensic audit. So it's good that we're finding it, but it's a little frustrating at the same time. Um, I know we are... I, I asked if we could, I want to understand how it happened. I want to go back to 2005 and try to understand how that happened. We have a meeting to back to help us figure that out? No, we're meeting, yeah. uh, we're meeting with Nora before, before, yeah. Our right. That's the she a pay consultant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just want so, to understand it. It's very no, so it's to clarify, it looks like, it doesn't look like there's $2.9 million dollars missing is 2.9 that we never exactly. had that the books showed exactly. that we did have. Right. Right. Exactly. So it's not like it wasn't two, stolen. Not like it was it's missing or stolen yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but it was a miscalculation. It was inaccurately yeah. showing as money we had. Right. As a fund balance. As a fund balance. Right. 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 Remember, your fund balance is assets. Yeah. It's not just cash. Yeah. It's assets. Okay. So if anybody owes you money, yeah, that's an asset. And that records on your yeah. balance sheet, and that records against your fund balance. <laughs> yeah. So, because it's for an example, asset. they owe you. If right? the cafeteria, if we had to fund the cafeteria out of general fund money because they didn't have enough money, they would owe us that money back. Right. And that would be an asset. Yeah, that's and still that part of it. Yeah. And added into the fund balance. I looked like the equity in your pump, right? It's still part of your data. Yeah. 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 So, so that was, yeah. Where did that leave us? Well, we we, are, uh, we need to dig to find out. But oh, it means, okay. And the auditors are going to have to, they brought it to the attention of the auditors, and the auditors are going to have to make an adjustment for this in this in this audit. Um, but yeah. I want to hear what they have. I would love to hear when they come to give that public report, let me know. <laughs> I want to hear what they say uh, about that yeah. particular adjustment. So that leaves us with a fund balance of approximately our current fund balance is 8.7 million and it's overstated by 2.9. Okay. Right. Right. Minus, okay. Yeah. You want me to do the math? Five no, million. No, no. <laughs> the fact that you say math needs to be done tells me what I need to yeah. know. It's about 5 million. Yeah, 5.8. We we're yeah. being told for a long time that we we're going to have 13 to 15 million. Right. 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 So this is, yeah, it's just. It's really kind of frustrating to have such huge amounts. Is this the same firm from 2005? We've had them, yeah, we've had these auditors for as long as... At least 11 years. We've been on the board, yeah. yeah. 
so and I don't know how long they've been on before. But um, I'd want to know, go back to that 2005 audit mm -hmm. to see who did yes. the audit. Yeah, the, right. the audit should be in the office. Yeah. Yeah. It makes John, just I'll, I'll let it go. It makes John McShane's visit and report of recommendations all the more timely because borrowing the money that we would need will not be as painful in the long run. You know what I mean? We can make it up. So to invest in Kelly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, the other thing that uh, Beth Ann provided a summary of charter school costs. She gave us a history. Um, again, that's uh, the historical data is in the um, on board docs if you go into the agenda and you open up the attachments. So that was very helpful. Um, and she also provided, but we didn't get a chance to review the summary of special education and transporta uh, transportation costs uh, because we ran out of time because we were. We were consumed with hearing this. Yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bomb that Aura dropped a text message like an hour before the meeting. Right. I did, we didn't even in our prep, I heard, it was the first I heard of it. It was yeah. like, oh my goodness. So that's our finance uh, committee report. Any questions? <laughs> All right. Joint tax committee. We did not meet again. <laughs> Park and Recreation, Dr. Thorpe. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Thank you. Uh, Forbes Road, Michael. Uh, yeah, there was a pretty short meeting. It was uh, they passed the uh, suicide awareness prevention and response uh, uh, <clears throat> that um, they, so they, what's what's the way I'm looking for the procedure. procedure. Yeah, and and also the, a new. Um, Acceptable use of internet, computers, and network resources. They updated that. You know, like all the same stuff. Surprise! Stay away from pornography. Be nice on online. No profanity. Don't try to steal anybody's identity. You know, we can do that. Um, let's see. Let's do ah, for the most part, that that was it. Okay. Questions? Okay, Eastern Area Schools. The report um, is clear that submitted. I guess the biggest thing is that the board has decided uh, we're rewriting the rules of membership, um, uh, the charter, if you will, and uh, we're going to incorporate having a superintendent of record. I mean, we've never had that, and a business manager of record, so that those there's somebody performing those two functions. Maybe an hour a week, two hours a week, something like that, but. Right now, those things aren't there, and so and it would rotate and on a two-year basis among member districts. There's no word yet on Plum or Penn Hills coming back, but we actually look at it, and because the fee per student, the building usage fee per student, if you're not a member, has been increased to $5,000, we're actually better off with fewer members because they've got to pay way more to send their kids to that school, and there aren't many options about where to send your kid. Of there are sunrise students. So actually, it was pointed out that financially, we're actually better off with fewer members, as long as we don't get too small, because because we make more money on the kids from non-member schools. It's but how weird. many students do they have? How many A people? lot. Those are two of the biggest ones, Penn Hills and um, Plum. Penn Hills and Plum and Gate Gateway. Um, we don't know if we get Gateway still a member, but those two are significant. Okay. Uh, and of course, the lawsuit against Penn Hills to recover the money that they should. Uh, the AIU refund from two years ago is still pending also. Okay. No, it was a pretty positive meeting financially. Good. Yeah. Great. Things are moving up. They have the roof. Um, okay. Well, let's get into the business part of the meeting then. Let's look at the approval of the minutes. So, um, board action is requested. Before we do that, do we have Taj as as um, coming? I didn't know if I should change that. Oh, yeah. Yes. It, it rolled yeah. So before we do the votes, let's get to make sure. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So she's. Uh, let me know when. That kind of robot. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have that last vote. You're gonna get it. Board action is requested to approve the minutes yep. October twenty fourth. So moved. Yes. Second, Dennis. Same. Take 
and all that. That was a lot before we started. Wait. Eight thirty. Yeah. A lot of committee reports. Mm -hmm. well, maybe where we can, we should start assuming that people have read the report and just say there's nothing to add or something like that. We, we ought to be able to find some way to streamline some of that. Yeah, I thought about hitting the big highlight stuff out of mine, and I thought, yeah, but there's some good stuff. That's yeah, I know. And that's, that, that's the challenge, yeah. you know? So. Oh. That's a challenge where you're making recommendations for the committee. So. Oh, yeah. And for the public that might not have been right. there. <coughs> be listening. Yeah. Right. My but they, but even they can see the report. Oh, uh, if they are in it. It's kind of nice to. I hear it. I don't know. Right. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah, if it would have been The motion passes. Now we'll get into actually the rest of it kind of moves pretty quickly, right? Yeah. So because especially as we do um, uh, consent votes, but the treasurer's report. Board action is requested to ratify and confirm the November 2023 federal fund payments of three million nine hundred eight thousand two hundred eighty-five dollars and fifteen cents. <coughs> Wire transfers of $522,192.91 and the capital fund payments in the amount of $26,970.65. The following report for November 30th will be made a matter of record for the minutes. That will be cash and profit and loss. So moved. I'll second. Motion passes. Um, board actions requested to approve the retirement resignations, new hires, and leave requests of professional and non professional staff. Um, and if you look at this list, uh, I think I have one question. Don't you pull it up? Yeah. Sorry. Just to look to see who it is, we've got. Um, Mostly paraprofessionals. Um, Kelly Carter, a long term substitute. Kelly Woodruff, paraprofessional. Saquon Thomas, a paraprofessional. Derek Dawkins, a paraprofessional. And Selena Aiken, a paraprofessional. And Laura Manella for an after school uh, teacher. So, so we need a discussion. Does every no. yeah, we can have discussion, yeah. I just don't know. What does L M or VM mean? Um, L M on VM or something. Left message. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean under salary? No. Left message on voice note. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it left a uh, start yeah. date. It's oh, also on really. start date. Left message. I see. Oh, yeah, so it is. Yeah, okay. you're right. Because I, I was saying, yeah, that needs to message on the email and mess with that. Well, under so salary, though, it ought to be lit. We're assuming yeah. it's $21.27. Yeah, it's a paraprofessional. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know why that's on there. Yeah, yeah there yeah. should be a dollar. So let's yeah. make, copy and paste. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. let's make a correction to that one yeah. that it's the $21.26. No, can, can we make it? I, I can make it. You can make it. Or am I supposed what? 2126, where Saquon Thomas. Nice catch. Uh, well, that's not good. That's not going to edit it on board docs. It won't? No. No. Because you have to do it on board I can do it. Sorry. Yeah. What time is it, actually? I think I'm due for cake. I think I'm due for cake. <laughs> <laughs> for cake. <laughs> <laughs> go, for go for it. Okay, well, he's making um, the changes for that to make it correct. We can, we can go on. It's a consent item anyway. So we can go on to section H, the suicide prevention coordinator. So, and this is what um, Amanda talked about that went through. And I'm not sure why this actually went through 
curriculum committee because um, it's a personnel action item. So it was a, requested to approve Danielle Pricer, school psychologist, as the district suicide prevention coordinator. But she was at the meeting, so. It was policy, wasn't it? I was gonna say, I don't remember her no, being at our meeting. Was yeah, it policy? It was policy. policy. Okay. Because so we were going through the suicide policy yeah. and she yeah. happened to be here too. Okay, but that, that should go through personnel rather than, um, you know, in the personnel thing. Uh, does anybody have questions on that? The, re the suicide prevention coordinator? So that's been identified, like, what that role is, right? That's yes. That lengthy policy. Yes. yes. Yeah. That goes along with that policy. Okay. That's yeah. why we want one more time to look at the policy. And she was, yeah, she, she participated. She went through in, that yeah. whole policy and made some edits and changes. And so she's done some, it before, you said? Has she done it before? Uh, good question. I'm not sure she's done it before. I School know. psychologists are usually the designated yeah. people who do do it. So. Yes, but right. she had good recommendations, too, yeah. for the policy. Uh, the revised school calendar board action is requested to approve the revised and updated 2023-24 calendar. Um, and I can't remember what those changes were. It was minor. I have. Yeah, it was some half days. It was uh, the day before Thanksgiving, the day before Christmas, uh, winter break. Um, it's just an early dismissal. There was a change in um, in March and April. Yeah. So we had to switch. Uh, March, March Wednesday, 20th. the 27th, is now a student day, an early dismissal, and April 2nd is now a, a clerical day, yeah. and the students will be off that day yeah. uh, to be able to abide by the new contract. And the, yeah, this had to do uh, to abide by the contract. Yeah. And when letters went home, so it was with the calendar. We all got confused anyway, but thank you for the letters. <laughs> I mean, that was really helpful. But <laughs> did we adjust the colors? I feel like there's a new. Is there another color you added with the orange? Yeah. And then I think color. that blue changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yes. yeah. I, I know it was way closer last, so we were like, wait, which is which? Too many blues. Did yeah. you change the color? No, you didn't. Did you? I had to add a, like, one. Well, I had to add a color. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on the calendar? Yeah, the only color left was like that blue. But if you look at the color coding, it's the first one on the left. The um, next item is the uh, board actions request to approve SEVAS invoice to purchase Envision materials uh, for 3122 That did go through the curriculum committee. Um, the next item, number four, is the SHAPE conference. Again, Amanda mentioned that for Casey Feldman to attend the SHAPE conference March 12th through the 15th. Um, at a cost not to exceed $2,500. Um, and, and now this says it's to be paid from the general fund. Do we, don't we usually pay uh, professional development through the um, title funds? Mm. Well, title funds this year are all, <clears throat> most of it is being um, a lot of the salaries. Okay. Um, all title two is the new to title one. Yeah, I think this so, one definitely has to come from the general. That may be okay. Uh, any questions on that? Item number five, 2024-25, uh, the Act One Index Approval. So Board Action is requested to adopt that uh, index resolution um, as presented. The resolution certifies that the Board of School Directors will limit any school district tax increase for the 2024-25 school year to the index is calculated by the Department of Education. Noted, it's high this year. Typically our index is around 3.5, 3.4. Um, so uh, if we decide to go tax a tax route for renovation, um, this would be, that would be a good year to do it. Yeah. Because, uh, it's because, we have some percent. because it's such a high yeah. index. Right. Yep. Questions on that? No. Item six, capital reimbursement resolution. This is the one John McShane recommended. Um, board actions requested to adopt the resolution to declare official intent to reimburse capital expenditures from the proceeds of a future borrowing. 
the reimbursement resolution is a good idea for the school district if it is spending or will spend monies in its general fund or capital projects that will later be funded by a tax exempt bond issue. So we can spend it and then we get reimbursed from it. Right. It looks back two months from the date that it's passed and 18 months forward. So in 18 months, if we haven't done anything, um, then we could go and re redo the reimbursement. Uh, quick, just quick, Questions? you checked it on that? The resolution, no, I've not seen it before, but it's, I've seen it in other places, so. It was, yeah, it, it was done by, yeah, it was done by our bond council. Uh, policies. Um, I'm not going to go over each of the policies, but we have the, uh, I, I guess if there's any discussion on uh, policy 607 tuition income, does anyone have any questions on that? <clears throat> policy 608 bank accounts. These are the second and final readings for both of those. Policy 612 purchases not budgeted. Dr. Joe kind of went over each, each of these. This is a, again a second and final reading. The district audit 619, second and final reading. Uh, 620, the fund balance. Um, this is the deletion of the old policy 620 and replace it with the new 620 policy. Uh, this policy number six, the 819 suicide awareness, that's the one that even though it's the second reading, Dr. Joe would like a third reading on that one. Put final word, final one there. Right. Uh, uh, number seven, um, eight, nine, and 10 are all first readings for conduct disciplinary procedures, education misconduct, Bonding and property insurance. Insurance. Does anyone have any questions on any of those or discussion? Okay. If not, then we can go to item J, consent items, approval of all agent consent items. Board action is requested to approve the following consent items: section G, H, and then section I. Second, Debbie. Right above it, yeah. passes. Thank you. Okay, now we get into each of the board resolutions that require a separate vote. Board action is requested to approve the attached conference field trip professional development and workshop request for November 2023 at a cost not to exceed $1,981.62, $94.31 to be paid for from the ESSA grant, $1887.31 to be paid for from the general fund. Question. Um, so moved, Ashley. We gotta move it. Yeah. It. Well, we haven't been so far with that. You're right. <laughs> You're right, though. Yeah. I'll second. Okay. Just got you that quickly, so you get to question. Yeah, because yeah, but I noticed tonight we haven't been doing it. But we mean, usually we're usually yeah. pretty good about that. Um, so does the sheet? Uh, does this document? No. I'm sorry. Is the oh, come on in? Is the Excel spreadsheet PDF a summary of all the other three? Yes, great question. Okay, because I'm, we're, we're not used to seeing the actual forms, the request forms, but as, but as long as there's a sheet that's the summary of everything that was on a request yeah. form, that makes it does easier the board, for us. Does the board want the forms or just the, 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 the summary? The, the summary is what I look at. Yeah, Sounds I mean, good. if we ever have a question, you've got the form, you can answer that question, like, does this do this? And then you can. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yep, that's all those other documents okay. are. It's just that summary is the one that has them. Thank you. Um, this is just, I'm just curious, um, for the field trips with the students, the different days for the third graders, um, 
and how we're like they're split up. I'm just curious. Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Symphony, the three. At the one time there was eight, and then in May it's. I'm assuming it's all of them. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just curious because of the numbers uh, on yeah, the field trip uh, request. Well, let me look at the request on. Just making sure it's um, not like incorrect. Let's see what the just uh, Let's see what the field trip request is, because that could be. Is that I'm like? So I see. 56 on May 8th. Is that what it says on the tone? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I see. I, that I, might be. I think that November one was where they went. It was just those students that had participated in the Disney thing, I think, because it says only eight of them. Okay. I was just curious why it was only eight and if it was. Correct I think or... it might have been. Because there was like a visitation or something that they yeah, got to do. There's like a group of them that he takes first place. Something different than like what it, what's happening in there. Oh, yeah. that was. I'm sorry. I was. You said November. It looks here, November 16th. Okay. Yeah. So that is. I was wondering if it said May 8th and then May 9th or something. Oh uh, no. So it I was, think that was a Disney visit. Okay. Disney. Yep. Just was the numbers were really. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have a. Yeah. No. I'm glad you said that. Just want to make sure. I just need your vote, Ashley. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Motion passes. Item K2 Board action is requested to approve the MOU for identified uh, WESPA members regarding the release time before the holidays. Uh, Matt, do you want to explain this one? Well, this is. Uh, we did it again. To align the oh, I'm sorry. So yeah. moved, Ashley. Yeah. I'll second. Ed. So this aligns the uh, paraprofessionals with the teachers where they're getting released early in case of the first certain holidays. And they'll make up their hours on clerical and PD day. <coughs> Matt, when you do the MOUs, they've already you've already discussed with them, right? So they no. I compare them and send them to Doctor Joe. Okay. Yeah. No, they 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 reviewed it. Okay. And there was no um, concern with it. So. Okay. Anyway. Motion passes. Okay. Item K three. Board action is requested to deny the Wilkinsburg Education Association grievance dated November 6, 2023. So moved, Ed. Second, Amanda. Discussion? Motion passes. Item K4, board actions requested to approve the purchase of frontline applicant tracking with proactive recruiting software for human resources and comparative analytics subscription for the director of finance. The cost for the remaining seven months is $11,420.28. This includes a one-time $3,562.50 implementation fee and $13,528.74 for the 2024-25 school year, and it's to be paid from the general fund. So move, Debbie. Second. Michael. Discussion? What is it? And this yeah, is where I, I would that. ask, yeah, I would ask Beth Ann and Dr. Joe to explain Thanks for this. Um, so we've been looking at this for a little while now. We already use Frontline for our substitute or service, faculty service. Um, so when they call off that our, our system has that we were looking at the human resource have been discussing it for probably six months now even before uh, Joblin came on so what it is it's one central hub for the whole the resumes applications it's all standard format um, I've applied years ago to different places and it has one standard format and it stores them um, 
it keeps the background checks, the applicant screenings, um, house a lot of H other uh, HR forms. Um, but I did read this one today: built-in reporting system for EEO reporting functionality to aggregate applicant data anonymously, anonymously based on position types and range, and an ad hoc reporting on an applicant job posting on forms and so on. So it's a nice form system to to so we can house it all in one place. Now, here's, here's what makes sense. We spent $23,000 last year in Indeed. That's just Indeed, that's not PA Educator um, or any other areas or sources that we were advertising. This is half the cost and they're going to put it on PA Educator, they put it on Indeed, they do all of that. And it's half what we paid last year. And we have resumes in our, our yeah, house, things, yeah. whereas in, indeed they're gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they're, they're never stored. So this would allow us that ability then to be able to, if a position opens, we could pull what we have already there um, and, you know, to have some, you know, a little bit of a jump on the game. Yeah, and I think they got more, you know, they have more sources to pull from too than mm -hmm. that we can pull. So. so does this replace Kelly services as well? And like no. for nursing? No, I just was. No, no, no. it's just made. Well, it'll house for when we have that, those positions open. open. This yeah. is just the recruiting so right. Part when right. We have a position, when yeah. we have a vacancy, we enter it here and it goes out to the basis. Right. Okay, right. I have my, one of my questions are the HBCUs in that target list where the vacancies go? If not, we can double check how are we going right. to manually do that? Right. That I can't answer. I just want a guarantee that we're going to do it manually if we have to. Because was Indeed doing that? What we were doing before, was it sending it out that way? Well, I think Indeed is open to everybody. Right. No, I know it's open to everyone, but for that question, I'm just, the trend, what I'm hearing yeah. in this switch is we're going to spend half goes, the money yeah. that we still goes to it, Indeed. Yeah. 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 So. so but I understand where he's come from. Me too. And Joblin and I already had those conversations as part of the goals, her goals for this year. And that's part of the conversations that we've had was reaching out to the HBCUs. Okay. So, but if I'm bet I'm just gonna guess that they probably don't. I wish they I would love to say that they did. But I'm gonna verify that for you. With you. Right. And I'm gonna get back to you, but I'm also going to just remind Joblin if we when we do have those. Okay, what's our plan to get it to the HBCUs? Yeah. And I'll make sure that I get back to you with so um, our, our plan for that. My question is what happens to our data if we ever stop using this platform? Do we get our data back out of it or do they pretty much own it and we have to start again? No, we, we can get our back. I think we, I don't think we'll have an issue getting it because it's ours. It's proprietary. It's gotcha. ours. They're just housing it for us. Okay. That's, a great question. It, That's a great question. We don't question get it too. at all now. Right, right. Because right. we don't even have any resumes and things like that that you go back and look for for somebody who applied for a position before. And I didn't realize we spent that much just on a deal. Yeah, that's, that's I had no idea. Um, it was about 500 and something a pop, though. Yeah, every time. And now it's going to take care of PA. I, I could probably even get the list of all the places where they put it out. Yeah. yeah, I'll make sure I get some follow up on something. And we can like suggest to them places we want to, right? Or that's what I want to ask. I'm like, if they can reach out to the HBCUs, if they have a way to do that, I'd rather them right. do it than or other like the professional extra organizations, right? Like black teacher professional organizations, like yeah. yeah. But yeah. as I'm sorry, as much more time consuming as it may be, I, 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 I would love it if in her spare time, and there probably isn't any, if Joblin could start trying to establish real contacts with the HBCUs, like instead of a form a label that goes Dean, College of Education, and so on, get a real name, you know, that's such an important piece of outreach for us in hiring. I'd love to see it be yeah, no, special. I, I, you know yeah. what I mean? Attract attention to Wilkinsburg somehow. And that's something in the spring that she can focus on right now, that part is, we're working, she's working on the AMC, ACMA, or AMC, yeah, things like that. So we can definitely, in the spring, right. make that a focus. Because that's probably when we'll do most of our hiring will start then. Because we were actually debating to put this off, and, and we all agreed at first to put it off until we thought, oh shoot, we're spending $23,000 for Indeed. We might as well get a jump start on this yeah. before the spring. 
The other system that's that's part of it is the um, Frontline Central, and that's the one that provides the financial data and it compares to other regions, IUs, schools, the state. It also it, it showed us. I wish I had it earlier. I would have used it for last week. It compared the financial. It had the financial data with schools comparing to student success, academic success, and growth. And it was it was pretty impressive. Um, and it's really and you can call many more coming from you know how her reports can more consistency because she won't have to create some of the reports. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> but that's the financial piece. Yeah. This analytics piece is all taken from public data. Okay. And the and the comparison out there already. We don't have to do any setup. I mean, we we delayed the financial piece because the data is not clean enough to to load to upload. It would just be garbage going in and garbage coming back out. But this analytics is, is, is dependent upon all the public information that's out there. They had a great slide that showed our test scores. Yeah, it showed our test scores after COVID compared to the all the school districts in the I wish I would have showed it to you. Compared to all the school districts in the IU and the regression, where we didn't have regression in the majority of our grades, we had showed us closing that gap. And I wish I could have. I mean, that's how the numbers have shown that. I mean, like, if you look at the numbers every time you show them, it looks like we're back to pre So it showed, yeah, it yeah. showed pre-COVID, after COVID, where all the schools have regressed, and where it showed that we were, now we had one grade, I think, that was <coughs> the rest where we were actually increasing. Yeah. We were closing the gap. Is there a way to snag those couple of slides for us? Yeah. I, I have to see that. I have them. I just didn't have them for so, last week. Okay. Unless I've already seen it in another presentation and I forgot. Yeah. No, I didn't have them for last yeah. week. Okay. So I have them. Okay. So is this the total cost for the whole thing, like everything of what we yes, use total, Frontline for? That is the total cost. And so I did do the math, make mm -hmm. sure I was right. I did the math. The percentage was right. I wanted to see if the percentage was right towards the end of the school year with the time left. And it was. It was like 58% of the year. Um, the reason it's a little bit higher this year is because that one time um, training and implementation and things like that, we won't have to pay again. Okay. It's kind of like a no-brainer, really. But anyway, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, K-5, Board Actors requested to approve the renewal membership with the AIU Technology Services Allegheny Connect Network, Regional Wide Area Network, for this fiscal year, school year, 2024-25, at a cost not to exceed $4,356 and to be paid for by the general fund. So moved, Debbie. Second, Dennis. Discussion? We have Jermaine here if anybody has a question. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the internet. So yeah. Yeah. I do got to get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good read. Yeah, it's really okay, good. motion passes. Item K six. Board actors requested to approve Beth Ann Ipe as the Wilkinsburg School District representative for the Allegheny Intermediate Unit Joint Purchasing Program for the 2024-25 school year. I moved Ashley. I'll second. Discussion? What would they be purchasing? This is, we always have to have a representative uh, assigned to the AIU. And that's when we have a joint purchasing program with them. So for, I don't know what items they are, but I mean, do you? Uh, fuel, I mean, there's different consortiums um, that they tie us with. Paper is one of the items that sometimes we can get go in with them and, and get a cheaper rate. Um, and other usable, uh, other but labor. It's very surprising to quit usually where they have a contract right. where we get it cheaper. We have a right. like mass buying, you know. Right. <clears throat> I didn't get a pop up. It took a while. So, can you give a vote? Yes, please. Okay. 
Okay, motion passes. Item uh, 7K. Board action is requested to approve removing the attached laptops, Chromebooks, and iPads from the asset inventory to be recycled or destroyed by computer reach. So moved, Ed. Second, Debbie. Discussion. Uh, um, any of that purchase with that online? <laughs> Oh. Is there a, you asked that question? Yeah, yeah no, not, none of it none of it was purchased for federal money. Well, I'm not sure when the iPads uh, I'm not sure what funds the iPads were purchased with because that was done before I got here in twenty thirteen. And some of them arrived in uh, twenty fourteen when I got here. Um, but that's over eight eight years ago, okay. so it wouldn't really matter. Okay. Um, the Chromebooks are newer. They were not purchased with uh, um, federal money. Okay. All right. One of the questions I had was, could we, you know, could we just clean them or clear them and give them to students or whatever? But um, Jermaine had a very good response. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially the main thing is that they're obsolete. So the, the, there are several reasons why it's not good to donate them, but the main thing is that they're no longer getting security updates. So if we put them in the hand of somebody else, we're basically putting them at risk of getting a cybersecurity attack because they're not getting the up-to-date patches and stuff like that. We don't want to do that, you know? And these are really old and obsolete anyway, is my yeah. understanding. And with computer process. I like computer yeah. reach. And with computer reach, computer they will have this is probably a question for Matt. I don't know if we'd have to get anything from that, but they I had I said, yeah. well, I asked him, I said, well, what's how do we know that they're destroying information for the computer before it's being recycled and we get a certificate for every computer? Yeah. Should we get something in place first? Well, we do we do. Uh, so I did ask uh, uh, David, which is a guy that's in charge of um, computer reach organizations, and they they work with a third party vendor for anything that they're not going to uh, they're not going to uh, refurbish. refurbish. But what, whatever whatever they refurbish, they will give us the certificate of data destruction, and for whatever they get to um, the company, they will give them the certificate. They'll pass that on to us. I did not get a pop up again, so. Thank you, sir. Well, no, I mean, as long as they're representing, that they're yeah. swiping, you know, clearing the data. I'm going to guess. Yes. And these yeah, are Turner. Know, we started with Turner. Yeah, I mean, so this we is. We got to start. We're just trying to piece it together as much as possible. Is that like the. That's just the plan of like. Like, there's like a life cycle, right? And like they there is a life that. cycle. We use them way past that. Right. You know, so that's just really, really where it's at. Um, Hopefully, we can get a regular um, life cycle going. Um, one thing that I can think of is that, like, we have sixth grade students that move on. Right. So I'm hoping that maybe we can just release it to the sixth grade students when, whenever they graduate. We just purchase for the kindergarten, which is what we right. have, so that way we're getting um, newer devices. So right, right now, we right now we have a cycle when they, when they graduate. We move the sixth grades back to kindergarten, but you know, over time they start to get kind of you know nasty, and you know they break a little bit easier. Yeah. So there's no like a set number of years and then we take them out of rotation. Yeah, usually it's three to five years. So our current Chromebooks are for end of life 2026. You know, so I don't know if 2026 we do a mass replacement and start that to say hey. At the end of every, every year, you know, we, we just replace it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you have a recommendation. I don't know. I work different. I'm okay. Yeah, that, that would kind of be my recommendation because then you, you you can say, you, now you can really say that we're giving something back to the community where hey, you graduate with your Chromebook and then we're we're yearly refreshing. We just have a plan. Um, that actually sounds like a really good. Yeah. But right now, we wouldn't want to do it. We'd be giving them obsolete. Right. Stuff and maybe not 100% of them all at once. Maybe like a gradual, like 100% of the sixth graders. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what I was saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. It's like they, they I'm just thinking about like replacing all of them all at once, and I was like, that's no, 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 no. Yeah, 
that. But, but I'm saying that once they're, they're end of life, yeah. we'd have to replace them because we yeah. don't want to have them using things that's going to put themselves at risk and our network at risk. Right. So. No, that makes sense. So one of the things that uh, Matt and Dr. Joe were just talking about was that we really should have a contract that says what they're going to do, right? They're going yeah. to give us a certificate after the fact, but we just want to make sure that this um, that this board action on it, that we have a contract before we do anything with it. So this this will make sure that the minutes reflect that it's pending receipt of a contract. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay, motion passes. I don't yeah, know the list is attached. Why I'm not okay. getting my pop-ups, but okay. Uh, item K eight. Board action is requested to remove the following musical instruments from the asset inventory to be donated to the Wilkinsburg Rotary and sent to a school in Africa. So moved it. Second. Second. Oh, question. I don't want to be picking. No, go ahead. Africa is a big continent. <laughs> <laughs> you know the country is rolling too. Are you from me on the spot? Okay. She's been so. working with the Wilkinsburg Rotary on it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I think it's fine. It's eight instruments. I just, you know, as a school district, um, yeah. to read to Africa is just like oh, that's pretty big. Where's it going, right? So I'm just curious if we could just for. You know, that would be nice to know. Know yeah. that it's no, like right. save the country. And, and many of those countries. Because when we say we're, we're donating to America, <laughs> like, yeah, that, that, yeah, that that yeah. Yeah. and it's only yeah. eight instruments. I mean, is it going to multiple countries? And no, so okay, so if they're going to. There's a, a school in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. One school. And there's a, a, a sweet little old lady that. That's from America. So, <laughs> not making it better. Yeah. America's big country. I know. <laughs> Local woman, but she came to Rotary and she presented um, to us and told us all about her school and just, you know, was talking about the needs that they have. And there's a local uh, few organizations, church organizations um, that take trips and help. And they're going to carry, they carry things with them because it's easier to transport things that way by actually taking yourself and taking. So we might even, if anybody wants to volunteer and take, to yeah. go to the school and carry an instrument with you, that's really, that's what we have to figure out is how we're going to get them to the school. But also some of them need to be refurbished and Rotary Club of Wilkinsburg is um, going to take the instruments to be checked out to see what needs to be done. Um, anything to get them to where they need to be and then we got to figure out how to get them there. Computer reach, speaking of uh, computer reach, they've actually donated some laptops and uh, to the same school um, and they sent them down already with CMU students that went down recently um, and then I know that Dave is also working on getting more to go down there so I apologize off the top of my head. Can the yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say after all of that, but we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it, it would just be I'll nice the, to... I'll get the school, the, the teacher, and who it is, and make sure... In the country. Yeah. In the country, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. yeah because... I knew it, but it's been a while. This has been going on for a few months, so I apologize. Yeah, and I remember you explaining how this was happening. I, I just... Did. You told us the country before, too, when you brought it up. I, I just don't remember which one it is. And, uh, okay, I got it! I got it. I think... Hold on. Let's see. Mama Arlene is her name. You should probably get the last name. But, um, maybe I don't. <laughs> we'll get the details for you guys. Like, we'll probably Google Mama Arlene. Yeah, I mean, I'd rather it, I just, I'd rather it also just be noted, noted in yes. the minutes, yeah. minutes because. Yeah. Yeah. We can be better than that. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I apologize. No. I just, <laughs> You know, I'm clearly from this country, <laughs> but I, if it was, if the tables were re reversed, I'd be like, well, we're at, like, yeah. that's, you know, yeah. Africa is much bigger. You're right. So, right. yeah. Um, and I did check with our music department first. I'm like, uh, will we use we these? Use Can them. we use mm -hmm. these? Will we ever use these? And they all agreed that they will never, I said, even if we had other older kids ever come back in 10 years from now, would we use them? They're like, no, we'll never use these instruments. Um, plus, they're, you know, the cost to get them refurbished oh, yeah, and so on. So, um, but yeah, we make 
know that. Apologize that we didn't get the specifics on that. Thank you. Is it Mama Arlene Brown? Mama Arlene Brown? Mm -hmm. And then Rwanda? Yes, Rwanda. Thank you. Because I'm looking through all my emails from Rory China when you, you just keep it? saying Mama Arlene. It doesn't get any more specific than that. So I apologize. But um, yeah, we met with her on Tuesday, August 22nd. And she started this school there. And she's, she's like 70 something. She retired and then decided to go to Rwanda to start this school. Um, so, and she, she also looking for people that want to come down and help and volunteer. But this is one way we thought. But the Rotary Club is going to make sure all of these. They're going to refurbish them. Yeah. Refurbish them. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good night. Okay. They pay a board? I don't know. Okay. Are you going to vote for it, Monica? That, that, <laughs> oh, that, that's one of them. Yes, I have to log back in. I think I'll time now. Taj? Yeah. Juanita? Oh, you want to go to Rwanda? I know. I'll volunteer. <laughs> Okay, motion passes. Item K9. Board action is requested to approve the letter of agreements with PA Nita M. Lowy, 21st Century Community Learning Center's Rules and Responsibilities. This is, um, I'll move it. So move, Debbie. Second, Ashley. The discussion, Dr. Joe, if you could. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've read it and I, I, I can see we're sharing, we're sharing student information. Oh. So this is uh, Grant. So we currently work with the Neighborhood Learning Alliance for our after school program. But great funding for Kelly. Um, he had to find funding for the beginning of the year because it's not there's not funding for it. So that's what this agreement is. Um, the director of the Neighborhood Learning Alliance applied, is applying for a five-year grant. It will be from March 1st, 2024 to February 29th. 2029 um, to fund an after school program at Kelly. And these are just two agreements that need to be attached uh, to the grant. And that's what they are. So the one is saying that um, the letter of agreement with part for partners or vendors, that's recognizing that we as a district receive funds to pay our teachers because uh, they pay a portion and we pay a portion. So that's an agreement that we would receive funds to support their, their salary for after school. And then the second agreement is just established, establishing that we're a key contributor and collaborator with the Neighborhood Learning Alliance to be able to build this after school program. Uh, is this separate the, from our right. normal renewal with them or is this? Is so this, this is just, it's not a renewal with them, it's basically supporting them for a grant that they're writing so we can provide after school. Okay. Um, so our the funding for Turner um, is through the Department of Allegheny County. Uh, this this is actually a federal a federal grant, and it can't be used in addition to what's being funded at Turner. So if we secure this grant, this will be for five year funding, where they'll still kind of be that person that kind of leads the grant, and then we run the, the program and support it. Is this just like the old twenty first century? Program? That's what I was wondering. Um, I think from some different. of the stuff that we have done. Because um, I worked with him on helping to write the grant, a lot of it is, but they're they're being very. Uh, it's a lot more. It was it was a lot. It was a really great grant he had to apply for. Um, so, so that would fund Kelly for five years. It would fund Kelly for five years for like their rates, right, and things like that. For, so, for the NLA's portion. NLA's portion, yes. Okay. Yes. And you know there was goals and things like that. There's. You know, all the things that we're looking at to do and seeing when we look at data, you know, um, you know an increase of 30%, decrease of 30%, like below basic, and 10% increase in family engagement, and things like that. So, it, um, does this in any way make it so that we then have to continue to partner with NLA? Not that we wouldn't, but like, does it in some way lock us into like a five year agreement with NLA as well? Or it's just saying this is just. Partnership with like the grant, saying okay. that we would be have that grant. So, and but they're running the grant, so we wouldn't have the grant if that makes sense. If we're right, not. but it also doesn't say like, I mean, for, who knows? Some yes. crazy thing could happen in three years, and we're like, we don't want to work with them anymore. Yeah. It wouldn't say that we still have some. These are just all agreements that we would, yeah. if we're running the program and we're using their funding, 
this is what we're doing. Gotcha. And for like data sharing and things like that, and when the kids apply, and they, they have to fill out a separate application, the parents agree to all of that because we need to produce like report cards and attendance data and, and things like that, um, taking pictures, things like that. So they do do us um, an application when they, when they apply. Okay. And Matt did read Were these one past you, Matt? Yeah, they're um, <coughs> yes. four. Okay. So, so we did look at it. I just wanted to, I just noticed that I don't think any of our resolutions tonight said subject to approval by the Senate. <laughs> so we when try, it, we when that's try not right. there, I hope it's safe to assume that it was. It was. It's the whole one. Yes. Okay. I'm tired of it. Sorry, Alan. Motion passes. All right. And we, have, we don't have any other agenda items here. So public comments on non-agenda items. You're the only public. Uh, board member comments. You know I got some comments. Mm -hmm. um, board member comments. <laughs> I'll make it short and sweet. Debbie, Michael, Taj, Denny. Um, it has truly been an honor to serve on this board with you all. Um, similar to what Joe has said earlier, I know we may not all agree on the same things, but from my initial um, moment of joining this board to the end of this current board's term, it is truly night and day for me, and it has helped me personally, I think, to sharpen my own skills even more. Um, and I just thank you for that, because this is not easy work. And I know you all have committed time that you really didn't have to, you know, support our district. And I think, um, you know, we've made a good mark together. And I just wanted to truly express my thanks for each of y'all. And, um, you know, hopefully some of y'all will return. I know some of y'all don't have time to return, but, you know, just want to throw it out there. Um, and, yeah, I really, I just thank you, especially you, Debbie, you know. You're literally like our board mom. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you just say grandma. No, 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 you're the board mom. And I, you know, just, I have learned so much from you. And I hope to continue to be able to learn from you even outside the board. So oh, thank well. you. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Ashley. You're welcome. Been a pleasure. Um, we didn't have any uh, absent board members, so we don't I have just, anybody to excuse. I, I just wanted to say one thing, too. Oh. I just, you know, I, I, how honored I was to serve with all of you all. And, uh, you know, all the things I learned and uh, just how much, I can't tell you just how much it meant to me personally to know that we were doing really good work. You know, we, we, we in the two years that I was here, I served. Man, we, we made a lot of big decisions that are going to help our kids and help this community go forward in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be leaving if I didn't. Just like, like when I left council, I didn't run for re-election. It, it was a thing where I was like, well, I'm really growing my family. I don't really have any time having kids in a couple of years. Now I'm, I'm kind of like transitioning, raising them. And uh, I wouldn't be on here if I, did, if I didn't feel like I could be the kind of board member that I would want serving you know, where I'm putting in the same amount of work that all of you guys are doing. Um, and I, and trust me, I would like to come back, uh, but I don't take for granted either um, that just because I want to come back, that I can come back because I was here uh, deciding on appointing three different, three of you guys. Mm -hmm. And I know the competition is fierce and uh, there's a lot of other people out there that are good hearted that also want what's best for their community. And if I do come back, I, like I said, I uh, there's no hard feelings if somebody else is more deserving of this seat. So, uh, with that being said, I wish you guys the best of luck. I know that you're uh, we're in great hands, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have a comment. So I just want to say that I have really it's been a privilege working with all of you, um, and I'm so sad that this is our last night together as a board. It's really sad. This group, because yeah, my four years here. I mean, this is my favorite, by far my favorite group. And so it's just been an honor and a pleasure and a privilege working with all of you. And also working under Debbie, I've uh, learned so much. And 
Um, yeah, I've learned, yeah, just I've learned so much. I have nothing but respect for everything you've done this year. Um, and yeah, I'm grateful for all of you. Ooh. This, is, this is not normal, y'all. Like, it's really not with school boards, and I just think. They give us other places, man. I, I oh, think, it's a special place. Right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I do want to echo everyone's sentiments. Um, when I started, it was a different board. <laughs> to say the least, it was very different, and I was like, what in the world did I walk into? But, like, the departure of the people who needed to leave. Everyone working together, um, like Dr. Griff said, the disagreements have always been respectful and everyone's point has been heard. And that, you know, is reflective of the people in here. And I am proud to be able to serve alumni and resident and to serve on the board. And I don't even know if I ever told you guys, but I completely forgot my granddad was on the school board. Mm -hmm. My aunt reminded me of that. And I was like, oh, okay. So um, it has been. It has been a learning experience. I'm very proud. I tell everyone about the board and the work that you guys pour into the children, into the board, into the community. At every real estate event I'm at, I am screaming at the top of my lungs. We are not the highest. Our great, our test scores are up. And um, I was at a training the other week, and people were saying some negative negative things about Wilkinsburg and not wanting to buy houses. And I literally was on a soapbox for like 15 minutes and took up the whole lunch break. And I had some slides from one of our board meetings where we showed our taxes and talked about the land bank and everything else. And every, all the agents were so impressed. And they're like, oh, okay, so how can we, you know, what should we start doing? Bring your people here. We have houses. So it's been amazing. Um, I do want to still volunteer at the Christmas events and anything else you guys need me for, don't hesitate to reach out because I'm around. And um, hopefully I have you know more time, but I will definitely carve it out to help where I can. Thank you. And I want to echo also that I've enjoyed meeting all of you folks. It's been like a family, really. We've yeah. had our bumps along the way. And I think that um, you know we've managed to round all of that. I am so appreciative of everybody that's as kids in this district as well because your boots on the ground and also you know i don't see anybody being self-centered that i need this for my kid you know it's about the kids at large and i think that's special so i think a lot of people are joining boards in particular to help their special need and uh you know i just think it's been great but it's been a real learning experience who knew there was so much going on in schools but you know it's been a really very wonderful experience well, it takes it takes a team, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this everyone has worked so hard uh, to get to where we are. And like I said, I wouldn't I wouldn't be uh, you can't. No one person can do it alone. You know, Dr. Joe and his team, um, all the teachers, everybody, uh, the parents. I mean, it, it really is. I feel like it's coming together. I feel really good about leaving the board. <laughs> I feel like we're in, in multiple ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but each and every one of you should pat yourself on the back because nobody else is patting yourself. <laughs> but um, feel good about where we are. It was a rough, I believe there's some really turbulent waters. And like, I feel like right now, is, you know, we're smooth sailing. I don't know how long that's going to last, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like, yeah, we really went through a lot. And, and I think, you know, each and every one of you is a part of that. You know what I mean? It's because of you all that we're able to get through that. Like, we came together as a team and we really worked hard on making that happen. And, and that's only the that's only way it can happen, you know? So when we had very divisive people on the board, it was hard to get through anything, you know? So... Um, I think that it really required a special group of people to get us through those toughest of times in this district, and, and we're looking really good now, you know, so. And I'm getting my picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ashley wants, wants a picture. Uh, well, I am going to, this. we can all have our hug fest <laughs> afterwards, you know, afterwards, but. Um, I am looking for uh, board actions requested to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Did you get that? All in, I, I think all in favor. Uh, yeah, uh, I I it it Make it uh, unanimous. Yes. yes. And
and oh, for the record, let's let the record show for the minutes for the executive session. We did have an executive for the minutes. We did have an executive session last uh, Tuesday. Uh, last Tuesday, yeah. Oh. yeah, to discuss personnel issues. And that's it. Yay! We always try to get you to take all the food. No, I'm not taking any. Yeah, yeah. Did you get? Or one of you? Suffer, suffer with this. They always like you. Maybe if you brought their sweet food, they won't eat it. 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 Yeah, they've been tearing the I can't even do it. Actually,